So I realized this will be coming out at the very end of June, but I thought I'd do something a little different for Pride Month. Rather than reviewing a single new release, I'd do three quick recommendations for LGBTQ films that I think you should check out. Let's get started! But I'm a Cheerleader was a pretty great time. It was the debut feature of director-screenwriter Jamie Babbitt. It's a comedy satirizing conversion therapy that flopped critically and financially 25 years ago when it released. However, in recent years, it's sort of gained a cult following. Part of why I enjoyed this movie so much is its willingness to engage with the subject matter in a way that's so uniquely playful. Something like the inhumane practice of conversion therapy is often treated more somberly and with a bit more weight. I think it's easy to see why a supremely tongue-in-cheek comedy poking fun at the homophobia of its day might have been seen as a bit tasteless. Hindsight is 2020 though, and But I'm a Cheerleader I think connects with many in the queer community today because it's presenting a very authentic queer experience through a social satire. It's also just really funny. The use of colour is kind of striking. The compound Megan is sent to is cartoonish and artificial, like a Barbie dollhouse come to life. I would not at all be surprised if some of the Barbie movie's visual design was directly inspired by this movie. I also love that it has a thematic purpose. The compound's supposed purpose is to push gay youth towards a more traditional heterosexual lifestyle. Less prey the gay away and more brute force the gay away. But the design of everything on the property, both inside and out, shows us that the trad lifestyle they're advocating for is a plastic facade built on lies. And they're showing it in a colourful and playful way. The film's biggest setback, and the reason I'm only giving it a 7 instead of anything higher, is the pacing. It's far too slow for my liking. A film like this, I think, should be moving a lot quicker. But apart from that, I had a blast with this. Like I said, the film is really funny. A lot of of punchlines, if handled differently, might come across as lazy or even offensive, but they're delivered with a kind of good-natured teasing. It doesn't feel nasty or mean-spirited or hateful. And it's not just jokes about lesbians either, there's stuff for the guys as well. You've got RuPaul, celebrity drag queen personality, playing an ex-gay, trying to teach the guys how to be super masculine. You've also got Kathy Moriarty's son, who's so dysfunctionally gay he can't even properly drink from a glass without a silly straw. If But I'm a Cheerleader sounds fun to you, then I highly recommend it. It's mostly a silly B-movie, but at times some of the satire can actually be surprisingly sharp. The way it wraps up is pretty cute too. Weekend is a 2011 movie directed by Andrew High. It's a quiet, understated little indie film about the maybe, maybe not relationship between Glenn and Russell. It takes place over the course of a well, this movie hit close to home for me in a lot of very personal ways that I don't really feel comfortable sharing. The stripped back presentation and lack of plot allows the film to really give their relationship as much screen time as possible. Everything about their relationship is grounded. When they argue, it feels real. When they chit chat about whatever, it feels real. And when they f it feels real. Tom Cullen plays Russell and Chris New plays Glenn. Russell is a classic romantic. He wants to meet someone, start a relationship, settle down and have kids probably. But he's also pretty antisocial, not very charismatic, and hesitant to flaunt or express his homosexuality in public. By contrast, Glenn is adventurous, charming, and loud and proud about his gayness. However, he draws a hard line in the sand on just keeping the relationship physical with Russell. He's a player with commitment issues. This dynamic not only makes for good drama, but it also gives them somewhere to go as characters. A chance to grow and change. They both have something they can learn from each other. Apparently a lot of their dialogue was improvised. The resulting directionlessness makes for conversations that feel like real people just hanging out. It doesn't feel scripted or acted because for much of it, it literally isn't. So that's Weekend. I don't have as much to say about this movie. It's just a really great, well-acted, well-shot character drama. Check it out! Breakfast on Pluto is a 2005 Irish movie. It stars Cillian Murphy as transgender woman Patrick Braden, aka Kitten. It's about her journey from Ireland to London to try and find her estranged biological mother. A coming-of-age odyssey told against the backdrop of the provisional IRA's rise to prominence in the 1970s and their guerrilla campaign for Irish independence. The escalation of tension between Ireland and England really helped keep me engaged, and it kept the film moving. It's something in the background that's brought up occasionally, but it comes to the forefront of the film in an unexpectedly explosive way. Cillian Murphy is wonderful and magnetic. There's a conversation to be had about the ethics of heterosexual actors playing a gay character, or in this case a cisgender actor playing a trans character. I personally don't have an issue with it if the performance is good, but at the same time I can't begrudge someone for feeling different. It is something that needs to be handled delicately, or you run the risk of turning up a performance that's just more offensive than anything. Thankfully, I don't think that's the case here. Murphy brings so much life and energy to the role. He's very theatrical 
theatrical and flamboyant. He's very good at capturing feminine body language. It's a performance packed with detail and nuance and a surprising amount of subtlety for a character so over the top. Patty puts on this high-pitched voice and Murphy does an amazing job at maintaining it. I imagine doing this voice consistently for the whole movie would have been extremely difficult, but Murphy makes it seem effortless. It's easily become one of my favourite performances from him. Breakfast on Pluto has a lot of side characters. Like, a lot, a lot. Arguably, maybe a little too many. On the plus side, the abundance of characters and how varied their personalities are keep the film really fast-paced. You've got the pothead bikers talking about druids and the space-time continuum, or the magician that can hypnotize Kitten, or drunkard Brendan Gleeson in a silly mascot costume. The downside to this is some of these guys don't feel properly fleshed out, nor does their relationship to Kitten. I don't think you're really with most of them for long enough. They're all supposed to influence her life in some way, but only about half of them feel influential? What I took away from Breakfast on Pluto was this. A story about a young trans woman and an adventurous free spirit. She longs to see the world, but she's ignorant of how uncaring it can be. What I like about Patty is how committed she is to having a sense of humour in the face of all the shit she goes through, sometimes to a fault. It makes her a really likeable character. It's a movie with a lot to offer, and, speaking as a trans woman, it doesn't feel like a bad faith caricature. If Breakfast on Pluto seems like something you might like, then check it out. So there's three LGBTQ movies that I think you should watch. If you couldn't tell by the upload date, this was a pretty last minute video idea, but I had fun with this. If I decide to do a video like this again next year, I'll definitely add more films to the list. There's lots of queer films out there that deserve more recognition and should be talked about more. I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye!